If I want to be able to test a small device like a uh, ferrite bead, like a small resistor, like a 2 ohm resistor, and I want to make sure it's not a 3 ohm resistor, it's not a 5 ohm resistor, it really is a 2.21% resistor. How can I do that when I know that sometimes my contact resistance might be an ohm or 2 or 5, depending on whether I use a no clean flux environment, what kind of debris I might have on my board, uh, what kind of shape of my probes are in, when was the last time they were cleaned or changed. Um, well, there's a technique called a Kelvin measurement. If you want to see details, I have a full tutorial about that in the flying probe test section and in the ICT section. Suffice it to say, the technique is to have two test points on both sides of the part. So here's another case where I need extra nodes. So if you have a board with a thousand nodes, I need at least a thousand points for access, but I need some extra ones for power wiring and also for my Kelvin nodes. For low impedance devices, like a resistor less than 20 ohms, for inductors less than one millihenry, for big caps, sometimes you might need to do a Kelvin node to have an accurate measurement. What that does is the hardware subtracts out the contact resistance. I have to have two different test points Think about it, if I did it on one test point uh, and put both wraps on there, then my noise is in series with both my drive and my sense. And so it defeats the purpose. I need two different test points on both sides of the device in order to test small impedance devices. What's what's called quadrature. Some people call that quadrature. Other people call it a Kelvin measurement. Both of those are the same thing, meaning that I'm going to use the hardware to subtract out the residual resistances. When it comes to designing tests for a, um, for a transformer, sometimes you'll have a load resistor across a transformer winding. Our slide shows two examples of that. On the right side, you see a 2K load. But if you'll notice, I have two 1K resistors in series. This is a design for test technique that's very powerful because when you think about it, here I've got a coil between pins four and five of T2, and that's probably a very small resistance in a telephone system. That's probably seven ohms, maybe 17 ohms. Uh, so can I test a 2K resistance in parallel with 17 ohms? Well, the rule of thumb is 10 to one is not testable, and that's a little higher than 10 to one. So what I can do at ICT is a technique called guarding. Again, if you want details, you can go to section three and look at the ICT uh, course and see what guarding is all about. But the point is that I can take out parallel paths through guarding so that if I use two 1K resistors in series, I still got my 2K load. But now if I put a test point between R13 and R14, then I can test R14 and guard the other node between um, at uh, T2 pin four and also I can test R13 and guard at T2 pin 5. Now everything becomes testable. I can test the in, um, inductance of the coil of transformer. I can measure both of the load resistors. So that's a design for test technique when you have a resistor across a small impedance. Another trick is to do that when you have a very large cap in parallel with a large resistor. Obviously your IC RC time constant is going to be extremely long and it's going to be hard to test that resistor. Say it's uh, 1 meg or even 10 meg in parallel with one mic. Well, you're going to have to wait a long time for that to settle out and a way to defeat that. In fact, you'll have to wait five seconds if you use the, uh, if you calculate tau, R times C is tau and you got to wait five tau. So that's five seconds to test one part. So another technique then would be to put, 200, uh, put two 500K resistors in series, and that way I can use guarding techniques and test that extremely quickly. So those are two techniques that you can use for, uh, for testing um, resistors when they're in parallel with low impedance devices or with large caps. In this particular example, you notice I've got a load resistor on the primary as well. The design engineer wanted a 75 ohm load across the primary. So instead, I used two 37.5 ohm resistors in series. And again, I can test the resistors. I can test these coils now and have 100% test coverage that way.